game within the game. When many people think about that phrase, they think about the things an individual athlete can do to improve their performance, whether it be behind the scenes or in practice. It might be working on a quicker release for your shot in basketball or a better first touch in soccer. It's pushing yourself to learn new things. Others may think of the rivalries that make sports as exciting as they are. Rivalries, whether between individuals or teams, create a high intensity game that raises the level of play and gets the crowd going. The examples are endless. Rafael and the Dahl and Roger Federer, the Packers and the Vikings, the Lakers and the Celtics, Georgia and Alabama, Duke and, I don't know, some school in Chapel Hill. <laughs> or here in Atlanta, Love It, Westminster, Holy Innocence, all ballot out with us here at Pace. But when I think about the game within the game, I think about the number 15. Numbers in sports are a way that you represent yourself to others. They have a powerful connection to athletes. Indeed, athletes build a career, and achievements or mishaps are linked with their number, their label. Oftentimes, those numbers have a meaning to the individual that others may not know. When I think about the number 15, it is a number I carry around every day, yet it is invisible to most. It may not be on the back of my jersey, but it's there. For me, number 15 symbolized the number of times I've had pneumonia. I was born with severe asthma. For those of you who are less familiar with the condition, asthma is a chronic disease which causes a person's airways to become inflamed, narrow and swell, and produce extra mucus, which makes it difficult to breathe. Pneumonia occurs when bacteria and fluid enters the air sacs in the lungs, causing an infection. The infection then generates a nasty cough accompanied by a high fever, difficulty breathing, and chills. Oftentimes, asthmatics are at a higher risk of pneumonia due to the extra mucus already present in their lungs. Now, the good news is that people who suffer from these conditions can take medicines, such as steroids, antibiotics, or inhalers to limit their symptoms. However, in my case, there were two complicating factors. First, doctors said I had a rare hole in my throat that made it easier for mucus to collect. The extra mucus would trigger an infection, an asthmatic reaction, causing normal sicknesses like a cold to blow up into pneumonia overnight. My still developing lungs ached for some sort of relief. But you see, I had a second problem. I was allergic to the medicines the doctors generally use to treat pneumonia. Not pollen, not peanuts, nope, I just had to be allergic to the one thing that could help me. Some nights, I'd be up all night coughing. There was a constant searing pain, my chest feeling like it was on fire. With each breath, I would inhale a shaky rasp of air that led to another coughing fit. Between the ages of two and three, I did not grow, not even an inch, because my body was too busy attacking bad bacteria on the inside. With these constant illnesses, I was always in and out of the hospital. One year, my asthma was so bad that it kept me out of the classroom for the entire year. Around the ages of five and six, I continued to battle long bouts of illnesses and extended absences. Some of those nights in the hospital were definitely low points because I knew I was going to be away from my friends. Missing things like birthday parties and sports was devastating. I wanted to be anywhere but stuck in bed. I spent days on end lying in unfamiliar beds, IVs sticking out of my arm. The loud beeping from the machines that helped regulate my breathing never ending. My body felt defeated as the doctors ran in and out of my room day and night. Having said all that, when I look back, I don't really choose to focus on all the moments in, in the hospital and being sick. I mean, sure, I remember the feeling of going to the hospital, as well as the terrible pain that came along with it, but that's not what I remember the most. What I remember the most is all the funny moments and kind things that the nurses and doctors did to lift my spirits. The nurses and doctors were always so kind, going out of their way to make sure that I felt comfortable. They cracked jokes and asked me about my interests. They made my day better, even on the worst ones, by taking me to look at the fish tanks or for joy rides in the little red wagons there for transporting kids around the hospital. One time, I was transferred to a different hospital via ambulance because the first hospital was full. When I learned that the mini TV inside was broken, my five-year-old self was quite upset at this as I was hoping to watch Wild Kratts. Sensing my disappointment, the EMT quickly began distracting me. He told me that the ambulance we were riding in was the largest one in Georgia at the time, 
the size of a small semi-trailer. Looking back, the nurses and doctors taught me a valuable lesson. It's not just our family and friends who lift us up, but everyone around us. NBA star Kevin Love famously said, everybody is going through something, when he opened up about his mental health struggles after having a panic attack during the 2018 season. Whether it's a bad day or a long-standing challenge, we all encounter difficult times in our lives. Keep in mind, these challenges cannot always be seen by the human eye. For example, the perception that others have of us may not always match the internal reality we feel. Our internal struggles shape who we are, just as my struggles with asthma have made me the person I am today and will continue to shape who I become in the future. My struggles taught me that you may think you know what a person is like, but you'll never truly know unless you put yourself in their shoes. Through lifting each other up and putting ourselves in each other's shoes, we begin to see a different kind of game emerge, one that involves random acts of kindness. These acts can be seen through the lens of sportsmanship. A perfect example of this is the events that occurred during the sailing competition at the 1988 Seoul Olympics. Canadian sailor Lawrence Lemieux found himself in an excellent position to win gold halfway through the race. However, he suddenly noticed that two Singaporean sailors from another event had capsized, one being unable to swim back to the boat. Seeing the men in distress, he quickly abandoned his course to the finish line. He helped rescue the men and then proceeded to stay with them until the Korean lifeboat arrived. By the time it was all over, he would finish the race in the 22nd position. Lawrence had devoted his life to the sport and had even worked three jobs while living out of his van. Yet, he put the needs of others in front of his own dreams. Lawrence may not have won, but he played the game within the game of life better than anyone. Furthering this idea of compassion towards others, Randy Pausch, a professor at Carnegie Mellon University who's diagnosed with pan pancreatic cancer, became well known for his The Last Lecture, saying, one of the best things you can give somebody is the chance to show them what it feels like to make other people get excited and happy. I was very fortunate that the nurses and doctors went above and beyond what was necessary of them to take care of me. While they had nothing to gain from being overly nice or making the extra effort, they did it anyways. And that is why they've made such a monumental impact on my life. That said, doing random acts of kindness really is not a game. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There is no keeping track of score, no winners and no losers. No thrilling buzzer beater, no loud or crazy crowd to cheer you on. What you do may even end up going unnoticed, but deep down, you'll know that you've made a positive impact on someone. The feeling of helping others is undoubtedly the best kind of fulfillment. Moreover, it is a small yet tremendously important aspect of life. Random acts of kindness go a long way, but we should try and make them less random. And finally, if we each think about the number, our invisible identity that shapes who we are today, then it will help remind us that everyone has a game within the game, one that we each have a chance to positively shape and influence. My number is 15. What's yours?